Hey, this is Mark Swarson here out at College Park, Maryland. Defeats uh, Ohio State 87-3, breaking a uh, two-game losing streak. Ohio State today was without key, which I think really played a big part. Uh, as uh, Kevin Willard admitted after the game, it made Maryland bigger than their opponent, which is a rarity uh, this season for the Terps. Uh, the, Maryland was led by Jameer Young's 30 points. Uh, Dante Scott had 12, and Julian Reese and Don Carey had 10 apiece. It's a weird game. I thought that Maryland, even though they were down at halftime, and I tweeted about this, the game resembled what they wanted the game to resemble. And I was a little surprised that with that being um, the case, that Maryland was down at, at halftime by five, and the question became, okay, what does the second half look like? Does the game flip to Maryland because they are being able to dictate what sort of style is being played? Or does the last 20 minutes uh, resemble that it was a lost opportunity in the first 20 minutes? And what we got was the first one. Maryland um, made a change at halftime, came out on the 2 2 1 press. Uh, Illinois, I think, I mean, Illinois, Ohio State turned the ball over the first four possessions. Um, a charge and, and three traditional turnovers and Maryland took over, went on like a 14-0 run, pushed uh, pushed the lead up, at times had pushed it to double digits, um, led by as many as, ooh, where is their largest lead? Biggest lead, 14, yeah, they led by as much as um, 14 in the second half. Ohio, uh, Ohio State got it down to three on multiple occasions going down the stretch. Maryland was able to push back and come out with a seven-point win. So Ohio State's freshman, Bryce Sensenball, some think will be one and done. Um, I think the jury's out on that. And Actually, I'll have an article out on what I saw just uh, scouting him in person um, after seeing him a lot on TV. Uh, Sensenball ended with 22.7 rebounds. He fouled out. And I, the numbers are, are really, really misleading. He had to work for everything. I asked uh, Chris Holtman after the game, did he feel like um, at times that sense of was frustrated? Um, he said, yeah, he thought that his young freshmen and his young players were all frustrated out there that it wasn't just Bryce. But you could tell by his body language and how he was moving that whatever Maryland was doing and how they were doing it was taking away his ability to get comfortable and really, really get started. So when you look at the numbers 7 for 18, you look at him raw, it seems, well, he's slightly under 50%. But when you see in the context of watching the game and how he get it, how he played out, um, you would understand that <laughs> that 7 for 18 was a hard 7 for 18 form, which is what I said in my preview. said so the way to stop sensing ball if you're Maryland is to make him a facilitator or make him a volume shooter where he's not making good decisions. Maryland didn't exactly make him a facilitator, but what they did do was they crowded him, they made him make decisions, they made it difficult it slowed him down and because of that he never got in a rhythm so in that sense despite what the number says I think that Maryland was extremely successful in how they attacked him so again for Maryland this breaks a two-game losing streak for Ohio State it is tough coming off the tough loss to um to Purdue to come in on the road and uh, um lose again that's a tough one for Ohio State Going to have to see how they bounce back from that. But that is it for me from College Park. You will not see me again until Tuesday night where I will be at Georgetown for Georgetown Seton Hall. This is Marks Washington with MTC Media.